podcast, but um, guys, we are in Applebee's right now. I'm with Chris Spheris. Um, I'm gonna say a little bit about him, and then I just want you to kind of explain like what you do and who you are. So this is Chris Spheris. Um, he also is also known as the Delafield Tenor. He um, goes around. This is how I know him. He goes around um, in parking lots, and you can ask him for a concert. He's a really nice guy. He has a beautiful voice. And uh, he just sings for like people in the city. It's just nice and calm. And um, he has a really amazing story that we're gonna get to today. So I just wanted to bring Chris here and um, talk about his story. So Chris, just kind of give a little rundown of um, how you got started doing what you do. Like there was that one drive through story that you were telling me about. Yes, so I have actually been singing seriously since 2007 but I was always kind of private about it. I just did it by myself, and I never had a dream of being wealthy or famous. I just had a dream of meeting people that would appreciate my music, moving people with my music. And literally 10 years after I started, I was working late one night in the McDonald's drive through They asked me to stay late, and uh, I just got into a spontaneous conversation with these two students that were uh, from Kettle Moraine, they graduated in 20, and uh, I made some comment about what they were listening to on the radio and just mentioned that I was a singer. It was just kind of a spontaneous conversation, you know, everyone was waiting in line and we didn't have a lot of people working, so I wanted to make an effort to talk to people, right. and uh, one of them said, oh, well, can you sing for us, and I just hit didn't really know what to do. I almost, I almost said no, but somebody just said, do it, what have you got to lose? And so I sang. And what happened over the next couple of weeks, I, I still can't believe, you know, three years later, you know, all these people started following me on Instagram and people would come through the drive through you know, asking me to sing. And it really right there was actually the realization of a dream. You know, yeah. just meeting people that would appreciate my music and I, I still can't believe it. Yeah, so after um, after that little night, what happened like the next two weeks? I was getting uh, follow requests from a ton of people that knew the two that heard me in the drive through mm -hmm. and I would notice people coming through it from Kettle Brain saying, oh, are you the singer? Well, yeah, I really like your voice. You know, can you sing something? Yeah. And uh, it, it's just, you know, after years of doing it privately, I had people that were actually following me and supporting me, and it, it felt wonderful. Mm -hmm. So the first time I saw you, I believe was a picture with um, Jeff and Wiz. Uh, I think it was around Summerfest, maybe. Um, so is that, what was it like meeting those two? Because that's how I mostly know you from. Jeff and Wiz? Yeah. Well, um, there were so many people that I met. You know, Jeff and Wiz were two people that came not too long after the fact. Wiz, mm -hmm. I actually, the funny thing about Wiz is I had actually talked to him in the drive through before it was known that I was a singer. So I, we already knew each other. Yeah. But he just didn't know that I did what I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Jeff you know, not so long after I ended up quitting McDonald's actually the following summer, I was just over for a soda and he said hi to me and I realized he was one of my followers. And yeah. uh, really nice guys and uh, you know, one of the, two of the many people that I'm so thankful to have met. So, um, before we talk about how we met, I just wanna go like, there's this one story that you have where you like really found out that you um, were a good singer. It was like your seventh grade um, singing teacher and I just want to let you tell that story because it's like the background of how you like fell in love with singing well it was um, yeah I was I believe I was 13 yeah I was 13 and I was in seventh grade and back then we all had to be in choir there was no choice mm -hmm. and um, I never really thought much about it I didn't really take it seriously I just thought okay you know it's another class I have to take and one day we were uh, singing the school anthem actually and the music teacher was walking around and she looked at me and I was kind of just like moving my mouth you know going through the motion she's like Chris you're not singing and I thought well you're right but uh, <laughs> you're not supposed to know that and I and she said do you know the song and I said yeah I do and she said all right stay after class and sing it for me and I thought oh geez <laughs> and um, so everyone left and I walked over to the piano and she started to play and she said, okay, sing it for me. And as I was singing, I just felt like this release 
an emotion that felt really good and I it just seemed like a natural thing for me and I was looking away from her I was really nervous and I was looking away from her and then when I finished the song I was kind of like in this you know other world and then I looked I decided to look away from where I was staring and I looked down at her and she was crying yeah and she said you have a wonderful gift and a, there's a lot of people in this choir that wish they had a voice like that mm-hmm. and it's funny because you would think that the next part of the story is well I started singing and that was when it took off but actually I was I was so shy back then that I actually remained quiet for years and it wasn't until my junior year of high school that I really fell in love with it when I was on my own yeah so that's a pretty crazy story like did you sing at all before that or was that like your first time really trying going like full force I think that when I was young, I mean, my mom always liked to play, you know, music in the car, and it was always classical style music, Mm -hmm. so I would kind of sing along with that just to myself, but even she didn't really know. She, She didn't really know until years later when she actually heard me singing by myself in the bedroom, and she knocked on my door and said, well, it's funny, you know, I've known you for 20 years, and I didn't know you had a voice like that. Yeah. So, wow, that's pretty crazy. So, um, the way that we met, uh, was it, it was just at McDonald's, I think, one night. It was, yeah, I remember it. I walked over, and they wouldn't let, the lobby was closed. Yeah, that was, was that just when, like, COVID was starting? It was, it was actually, I think it was in July, July. if I remember okay. right, because it was right after, it was two weeks after I did, like, a concert for a ton of people, and I walked back, yeah, it was a week later, and, um just uh they wouldn't let anybody in it was drive through only and so i thought oh you know so i was going to turn around and then someone it was your friend and our friend alex yeah. said oh hey chris and it's funny i recognized you yeah because i think it was wiz or someone at, at one point had shown me your videos and it, just on a whim i said are you young young goosey and you're just like yeah and uh, I thought, oh, well, you know, I'm Delafield Tenor. And mm-hmm. so it was kind of funny because we both... Yeah, I had I'd heard of you before, too. You heard of me, but we just never met. I, right. I have a video on my Instagram. Um, that's like the moment we met. It's us shaking hands. It's yes. like, nice to meet you. So mm-hmm. that was a pretty cool experience because... Um, we were just going to McDonald's to get food. And then it turned into meeting you. And then you sang for us. And then... Um, we met several times over the summer for other like small concerts and so that's pretty cool so like this past summer um has that been like the most concerts you've done yes um i used to do a lot more concerts when i was working the drive through window just because i had you know the the ability and the time mm-hmm. um 2019 well it will I'll just go through a brief recap 2017 was when I was first heard 2018 I left McDonald's and that was when I recorded my first album as kind of like a, a gift to everyone that would listen to me in yeah. the drive through and then in 20 it was late 2018 a bunch of people were at McDonald's that used to listen to me and I kind of came and that was the first time I'd ever sang for them when I wasn't behind the window yeah. wearing the McDonald's uniform and then 19 my first album got delayed and I released it then and then uh, the one other thing that happened in 2019 that was worth mentioning was uh, you know Noah who was another one that listened to my music you know a good friend of Jeff and Wiz was leaving for school and they actually invited me out to this parking lot and I sang a goodbye song in front of like the most people I'd ever had and it was that was when I really you know realized that my music really went out there and it was Mm -hmm. it was wonderful nights yeah, no, that's. You just had like so many cool stories of like meeting all. Like, did you ever expect that you'd be meeting so many different people through music? No, I, I still, you know, have to wonder, you know, when I'm gonna wake up and, and realize that it was a dream. I just, yeah. I, I never knew either that my voice would develop to what it was either. I mean, three years ago, you know, I could sing, but when you have people behind you that enjoy what you do, it inspires you to get better. And I can, yeah. I can hit notes now and do things with my voice that back then would have seemed impossible. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so you were talking about dropping a Christmas album. Is that still in the works? Absolutely. Um, the only question at this point is whether or not I'm going to record any more songs because um, right now there's about five of them. 
mm-hmm. and without a doubt, the best track on the album is Oh Holy Night, which you actually listened to. Yeah. And that was kind of in dedication to my grandmother who passed away when I was two and I never really got to meet her. Mm-hmm. But I did hear that that was her favorite song, and so singing that song was a dedication to her. And yeah. I, I look forward to dropping that album, whether I record more songs or not. Yeah, and you, like every song you sing, you kind of have a little story attached to it. So um, uh, there was one time where you're telling me about um, your friends who passed away in a car accident and you had a song dedicated to them. Can you just go more in depth about um, those types of like why music is so special because it allows you to express yourself? Um, yeah, see, uh, that's, you know, I, I'll try not to keep this answer too long, but see, the, the thing with music and how I prefer to do it is when I sing, it comes from deep deep inside it comes from the deepest and most emotional place in my heart as i'm singing these songs they relate to my life maybe it was someone who passed away maybe it was a friend that you know moved away and i just don't talk to anymore you know just maybe it was a girl that i i cared for at one point that i i didn't end up having a relationship with and when you pull that backstory into every song and you sing from deep inside you that's what makes it truly beautiful is the fact that it's coming from so deep yeah and um but the song that kind of reminded me of my friends was mad world which was Mm -hmm. on my first album and the reason why it does remind me of them is because i actually listened to that song many years ago when i was at a grill out with them we were all just kind of chilling in the driveway it was late at night we were just listening to that song and when i look back on it i could never have guessed that a year later they would both be gone they passed away in a car accident together and singing that song you know was a great way for me to release some of the feelings i had about that and pay tribute to the times that we used to have together yeah that's that's sad but it's like I'm glad that you found like an outlet to like express it. Sometimes sadness is actually the most powerful tool a musician can have because if you truly are singing a song from the heart and not just, you know, singing casually or just enjoying it, but when mm-hmm. it's really coming from inside you, that's what gives you the power to hit the big notes and to really do a moving performance. And yeah. so every song has a story and you know, I, I would never think of just singing a song just casually. It's it's always from the right. heart, and there's always a reason. And you can always hear that, too, like, with certain artists, um, if it's a more sensitive subject or if it's something that, like, hits closer to home, you, like, you can hear that in the music, and it sounds just, like, more powerful and more captivating. Do you have, like, any goals long-term, or is there... Do you have any like growth that you want? Do you want more people to hear you? Well, see, I think at this point... I See, I've always had my feet planted very firmly on the ground is I I don't live trying to outdo what I did the day before I just live day by day and be thankful for what happens to me and uh, but no I'll, I'll always you know be happy to share my music and I'll always be happy to meet new people and you know that's in my opinion way more rewarding than any amount of money so I'm just gonna I'll yeah. keep I will keep singing and uh, I look forward, you know, to the future times where I meet new people or run into people that I already know and we can take a, a walk down memory lane using music to do it. Yeah. So, um, if you were uh, to want to, like, meet new... Like, would you be open to um, putting your music on, like, iTunes and Spotify? Oh, absolutely. I'm just not technologically yeah. uh, real... I mean, I still hand out my albums on CDs. I do it, right. li- I do it like we're living 20 years earlier than we are. Mm-hmm. But, no, I would, I'd be happy to put them on Spotify, and uh, I think it would probably be easier for people to listen and hear me for the first time if I did that. So I, I'm definitely... Yeah, really I could cool. definitely help you with that, because we, um, we still need to, like, start working on our song soon. Yes. So... It, People probably don't know, but we've actually been, um, a while ago we were talking about working on a song, and I still want to do that. I'm trying to drop an album sometime early next year, I'm thinking. Um, but I definitely want to have you on there just because um, I think we can make like a powerful song that a lot of people will be able to relate to and connect to. So I think um, yes. getting that planned out would be good. Uh, would you be willing to sing right now just so like, people at home can hear you for like the first time? Or yes, um, we can be kind of quiet. Yeah, I'll, the the song that I'll sing actually uh, is one that is it is on the quieter side. 
I heard it actually my uh, senior year of high school and it, it's called Since You Stayed Here and the meaning that this song has to me is that you know time is one of those things about life that we cannot change you know you you make plans to do something you enjoy doing it and then it becomes a memory and you know I still remember what it was like being a senior in high school and so this song is called Since You Stayed Here and it's dedicated to those times that have gone by. Sure, I'll move on the mic. Okay. I'll just do a couple lines. Okay, that's fine. All right, so this is Since You Stayed Here. You'd never recognize the room. The pictures all have different frames now. And all the chairs are rearranged now Somehow I've thrown out every souvenir Yes, there've been changes made Since you stayed here So, it was great singing. Even though it was just two lines, I think it was like a good um, idea of what type of um, musician you are. And, um, yeah, I'm definitely, we definitely need to start setting up some more concerts because um, I'm sure that there's more people who want to meet you. Oh, yes. You know, it's difficult with the COVID mm-hmm. right now. And it's also difficult because, you know, when I when you do it in a parking lot, especially as it's getting colder, I, you know, it's just harder to do it in the winter. But if there was a way to find a place that I could do a few songs, all I would really need is an instrumental track in the background. Like, you could yeah. pull them off YouTube and a microphone. I mean, you microphone and, you know, a, some way that we can play a, a track on YouTube and it could be done pretty easily. Yeah. So with this podcast that I want to do, um, I want to just have some, like, conversations about, like, life and like um just like how people are doing in general so would you consider yourself to be like a happy person i would say to be very fair it's very up and down Mm -hmm. um you know with covid it's hard to get together with friends um you know i I would just consider myself a very up and down person, you know, I mm-hmm. I would say overall I have lots of reasons to be thankful, you know, I have lots of people that appreciate my music, I have friends even though I don't see them maybe as often as I like, my job is good, but uh, yeah, I mean we all have our struggles and mm-hmm. I'm very open to admit, but you know, again, when you have a struggle and you put the feeling of that struggle behind a song, that's mm-hmm. not only a way to help heal yourself, but it's a way to produce a more powerful song than if you didn't. Yeah, no, you just, you said that pretty much perfectly. I think, like, not even with just music, but I think, like, other people, they can apply that to um, anything that they do. So if, like, they're really passionate about a sport, then they take one of their sadness moments, and then they kind of, like, use that as fuel to yes. help them get better at whatever they do. And I think... Um, I would agree with you there. I think I'm pretty up and down. I have a lot of reasons to be thankful, but um, at the end of the day, if you're sad, like you're sad, there's not much. Well, and you know, I, I've always been kind of different, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm learning to embrace that as I as I'm older. But you know, my hobbies and what I like to do are a little different. But um, you know, I'm lucky to be doing what I'm doing, and. Uh, you know, I, it just depends on what type mm-hmm. of a mood I'm in. I, I think maybe a lot of people go through the type of phase where if they have a bad day, they can't help but think of all the things about their life that they don't like. Yeah. But when they have a good day, then they remember all the reasons they have to be thankful. So life is an up and down battle and you have to enjoy, you know, being on top when you're on top there's a quote i love and it's it's called only when you've been in the deepest valley can you ever know how magnificent it is to be on the highest mountain and that's yeah. when i'm singing for people that like what what i'm doing i'm on that highest mountain mm-hmm. yeah wow you like you like i think we have like similar mindsets because like the stuff that you're saying like it resonates with me that's why i like make videos or do these podcasts i have a lot of different projects i like to do and i think um when I'm sad, like when I post a video or I like do a podcast, it, I feel like it makes me happier because I'm yes. like being productive and getting stuff done. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's important for um, people to just start doing what they love as opposed to um, 
uh, just trying to go with the flow or trying to fit in or whatever. You have to embrace your differences, and I think you hit that pretty spot on. And I also think that, you know, if, if someone, and I'm, if there's one lesson that can be learned from my story, it's we truly don't know what we can do. I mean, I had no reason to believe as a kid that I had a voice like this. And I remember thinking to myself the first time I ever started singing, I thought, this is ridiculous. You know, who, this is never going to work. You know, who, who's mm -hmm. to say that I can sing? But it was because there was something there that I didn't know about. And so I think there's a chance for everyone that we may have something inside ourselves that we didn't know we had. Yeah. Yeah, and I think your story pretty much represents that, like, perfectly. Um, with Applebee's, you just called here and got us, um, you got us, like, o the okay to, like, record this podcast. So I know with a, a lot of other business owners in the area of Delafield, you know them and you're friends with them. So can you tell me, like, what those type of um, relationships, uh, those face-to-face, -face, like, hey, how are you doing? How important is that for uh, someone like you who likes to go to a lot of these places? Oh, it's it's very, you know, it, it means everything. You know, I, I've always said that the little things are the big things. You know, maybe I have a rough day at work and I, I come into Applebee's or whatever and I talk to the manager and it, we can both maybe vent a little bit about how our day is and, you know, mm -hmm. maybe he'll talk about how COVID has been hard, you know, for the business. Maybe I'll talk about how it's hard, you know, working out outside when it gets cold and uh you know s sometimes it's the little encounters that are the big moments yeah and uh, i also go to culver's all the time i i know that if there's people out there watching the go there they're probably like oh he he's here but yes i i'm there i'm there several times a week and i but it's because they're all so friendly and they're all so great i i, mm -hmm. I do care for the food and uh, it's just a nice thing to do when you're done with work or if there's yeah. nothing else going on to stop by grab something to eat and say hi to someone so you still work at the cadillac dealership right yes so what do you um do there i am an invent well my job is a little uh split right now i'm an inventory manager which means I kind of keep track of things. But we also, at the moment, don't have any lot of tenants, which means that sometimes I'll have to clean a car or, you know, quick run and gas a car. And mm -hmm. so there's a lot of stuff that I that I do. But, uh, you know, I really, I'm a car enthusiast as well as, you know, a singer. And so just being given the opportunity to be around cars every day brings a smile to my face. You know, the guy mm -hmm. that brings in the 20-year-old Cadillac, you know, to be worked on and just, talking to that guy and seeing his car is is a cool thing for me and you actually have how many cars do you have i just picked up my third one yesterday Your third car oh what kind of car is it i'm not a big car guy but um well i've someone might be this is another thing that kind of makes me different from most people my age is i'm not into the sports cars and i really am not a fan of the newer cars i like the big old old school cars like the big cadillacs and the lincolns yeah and that's why yesterday i picked up a 93 lincoln town car which when you think about it it's crazy because that car was new when i was in preschool and oh, wow. it, so and then i i have as my everyday driver i have a 99 lincoln town car which is same type of thing but not quite as big and yeah. then my other toy is a 2005 cadillac deville so i, I like the big old school stuff i've never mm -hmm. been a fan of the newer sports stuff now when you get those cars, are they um, more expensive or less expensive than like cars that will be on the market today? Because like they're like seen as collectibles, so I don't know like how it works necessarily because I don't like follow cars that much. See, the funny thing about older cars is that they will either be priced at a collectible level. It really depends. In the same way that some one person would pay ten thousand dollars for for an older car, and another person might say, "Well, I'd give you one thousand dollars." It really depends on who's buying it and who's selling it. You know, yeah. someone might look at, you know, my '93 town car is, "Oh, look at that big old boat. Who'd want that?" But another person might say, "Oh, that's really cool, and they don't make anything like that now. That's worth something." Yeah, there's that one quote. It's like one man's trash is another man's treasure. So you just have to find the right people. So have you thought about flipping your cars or? trying to sell them for more money i you know i really for a while i did do that actually mm -hmm. but i i think i've gotten to the point now that i've really gotten three cars that i really like you know the cadillac is a fun toy to take out on nice yeah. days my 99 lincoln is a great everyday driver and uh, my 93 town car is kind of like a tribute to my childhood and i just take that out on nice days and so mm -hmm. at this point i would say 
I'm content, but you also never know what could come up. I could look right. on Craigslist tomorrow and say, oh, I really want that. Next thing you know, I'm making, you know, some transition or whatever. But, yeah. you know. So, um, with like, like, you have an extensive knowledge about cars, um, a pretty good knowledge about music. You're obviously a musician. Uh, have you ever thought about, so we were just talking about this earlier, like with COVID, there's more time to, I like, think, work on other things or learn new skills. So have you ever thought about, um, learning like more social media and getting on like Instagram or YouTube and because I feel like you could do a really good job talking about like cars or um, talking about music. The well I mean the music is, is something that I already kind of do like I post mm -hmm. videos on my Instagram you know maybe talking about a song or, or talking about something that recently has happened like but what I do a lot on Instagram is I remind the people who follow me, and I know sometimes it gets maybe redundant, but I remind the people who follow me how much I appreciate them. Yeah, no, I always see those posts, and it um, makes me smile. It's just like it's a reminder that like you're always there. Um, but it's harder for you to grow on Instagram, I think, because you you have like what 86 followers. That's pretty good. Um, but. Like, the only people who would follow you would be um, people who are, like, in the area or people who are uh, um, meeting you in person, usually. Or if someone who's listening to this wants to follow you, what, what's your Instagram? Well, my Instagram now is Christopher Spheris. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you know, we could talk later, and if it would make it easier to change it back to Delafield Tenor, I could do that if it would be easier. But uh, It's whatever you want to think, like, whatever you want to be branded as. Because, I mean, like, you're more than just a Delafield Tenor. But also, that's like what most people know you by. So I think you could go either way. Yeah. But then, um, with like things like TikTok and YouTube, random people can find that, and then um, you can grow your following that way. So have you ever considered um, starting to post on YouTube? Like I could help you with this if you want. I would. You know, I would. I would actually. You know, with this, with the two albums that I recorded, I think mm -hmm. that it would actually be, you know, a pretty good idea to just put the tracks up, if nothing yeah. else, just so that someone could go to YouTube, click on the video, and just it'll just be a track but that's all they really need mm -hmm. TikTok is something where I have to admit I'm somewhat uneducated but it, yeah. it to me it just doesn't sound like my type of thing I like Instagram and YouTube more than I like snapchat and yeah I and I could be you know wrong on this but it's just TikTok just doesn't seem like the type of thing because you can use each other's sound if I'm correct on that yeah and I just would rather keep it on an individual level for just listening purposes only okay yeah i understand that i was gonna say um from like a marketing standpoint tiktok is really good at reaching new audiences so you can put like little tags on your videos so if it's like a music video you can put like hashtag um local music hashtag local musician and then people who are interested in those subjects will find you more um but i understand like your concern about the sound thing you don't want people using that for um the wrong reason or whatever so i get that but um i definitely help you set up a youtube where you could uh just post you singing you could post whatever you want really yes absolutely and um as far as why i don't talk more about cars it's because you know as much i could tell you a lot about you know what a car is worth and uh you know about the car but there are people out there that know way more than I do about it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not mechanically inclined. I don't know how to work on them. And so if I was to post videos talking about cars, I really wouldn't be saying anything that hasn't already been said by someone who yeah. knows more. I just think, like, in general, you're pretty well-spoken and, like, um, you know what you're doing when you're talking, I think. So I think uh, you have definitely have some insight that I think other people would find interesting. Um, but also, you could just like pick up your phone and start taking videos and vlog like your day of going to work or whatever. I feel like people will be interested in that too if they um, already like you for your music. So that's just another thought. Like I'm not telling you like you have to do this or anything. And I'd you, definitely help you set like something like this up. You know, and it is funny because in all the ways that I am a very open person, you know, I, I prefer to just keep my work business to myself because, you know, mm. it's just the, the when you work in a car dealership, it gets crazy. And sometimes, you know, I'll get stressed or I'll disagree with something. Yeah. And, and, and those you just are, don't want another I, thing to I, think about. No, I mean, it's just yeah. work, work. And uh, I've always, and most people would maybe disagree, but I've always been a believer that work and social life should be two separate things and work in your own personal hobbies you know well they mix i don't think that you should be you know mm -hmm. out there telling everybody what you're doing every day yeah. with work because that's you know how you make it right. but that's just my opinion I just no think that's i definitely you, i respect that 100 percent like um you're not always going to be open to sharing every moment of your life like you need that alone time or you need that time where you're just focused on like 
working instead of having to think about other things. So I totally understand that. And I also think it's definitely fair to say that, it, and this is just, may, I think maybe everybody, but I know it's me too, is when I'm working, I become another person. Like mm-hmm. the the guy that you would see working at the dealership is not the same guy that would sit down and talk to you about music or sing for you. It's just that's when, you know, my get things done right. side comes out. And I, I don't think that that side is, is something that should be existing any more than in the workplace yeah no i agree like when i'm at work i used to work at pick and save um and i'd go in and like some days i just wouldn't want to be there so i just had to like go through the motions and get stuff done yep and i didn't want to do like like i wanted to go home that's all i was thinking about was getting home at the end of the day Mm -hmm. um so now i'm like unemployed i do doordash which is pretty good money it's just driving around delivering food um but i'm trying to find like more side hustles that's why i'm starting my podcast I'm posting more videos on YouTube. I'm just trying to like get more content out there to help me grow and hopefully um, that can uh, replace or be a good like side hustle at some point. Well, and I also think maybe that's a fair point is, you know, for the people who are kind of perplexed by what to do at a time like this because, you know, COVID-19 is so unprecedented. Mm-hmm. I really feel that, you know, everybody right now who is struggling has the right to struggle. You know, it's yeah. just we're living in unprecedented times and no one really knows how to handle this. So if you are, you know, out there right now thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, just remember if there's any comfort in it that you're not alone and that there's a lot of people out there that are dealing with that same thing. Yeah, no, a lot of people have been hit by um, COVID pretty hard. I know a couple, like, smaller businesses, and it just, like, hurts them more than um, more than normally. So I don't want to get, like, political, but um, are you, like, a big believer in, like, um, social distancing and masks, or are you just more, like, what's I, your take on COVID, basically? COVID is, see, it's one of those things where, as a young person... I don't worry what it's going to do to me if I get it. Mm -hmm. I worry about some of the older people that I come in contact with. For instance, I have two people that live in my building, and I kind of call them my adopted grandparents. Yeah. And she's 80, and he's 89. If they were to get it, it could kill them. Right. And so I'm not a big fan of wearing masks. I will if the person that I'm with asks me to. So I always leave it up to them. I always... You know, if someone asks me to put on a mask when I go into a business, I'm happy to do it. But if someone is okay with me not wearing a mask, then I'll exercise my right not to wear one. Right. But uh, I don't take it lightly, that's for sure. Yeah. No, I, I think, I mean, that's what like, everyone's been saying to me. Uh, like, the way our school's handling it, we have, like, these little groups of kids, like four or five kids in each class. And then if one of those kids gets it, then everyone goes home in quarantine. So they're taking it pretty serious. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of kids don't realize... Um, it's more for like the older people who are at risk and like spreading it. Yes. Uh, but I also know a lot of the kids at my school um, don't like that approach as much or they don't like the way things are being handled. What I don't agree with is what I, and maybe it's a public term, but I don't think, I don't believe in mask shaming. I think that if someone is in a position where they can choose whether or not to wear one, I do think that that person has the right to decide. But they also, at that point, should consider who's around them. Are they with older people? Mm-hmm. You know, and when you go into a business, you don't know who's going to be there. So, you know, it, it's not a black and white issue. Yeah. It's definitely not a black and white issue, but I, I would say when in doubt, proceed with caution. And I think with politics, like... Um, I don't really like to get into politics too much because I think it's just back and forth and like there's uh, two sides to every argument and no one's going to like, everyone just loves confirmation bias. Like if you're hearing something that you agree with then you just are going to continue to agree with it and then you don't like um, what the opposing people say. So politics in general, I think you can apply that to like every situation like COVID, um, your stance on who you think should be president. I think... um, Either way, there's just two sides to every argument. Well, and I think if there if there's anything about the world right now that I really do have a problem with, it's the fact that people who disagree can't seem to be able to get along. I, I mean, I've seen friendships destroyed mm-hmm. because two people are voting for different candidates. Yeah. And I just... And I've also seen on social media, like if someone posts that they, you know, support someone 
and the other person disagrees with them, then a lot of times I see the other person jumping down that person's throat and, you know, get it, get resorting to personal insults. And I just feel that all of us have a unique story in life. All of us believe what we believe for a reason. And I think that if we disagree on something, that's grounds for an interesting conversation. Not, mm -hmm. not a debate and not an argument, but just, you know, why do you believe, you know, Joe Biden should be president? Why do you believe Donald Trump should be president? And you may learn from each other, but just make, make your differences interesting. Yeah, that's what I always say, like, it's okay to disagree with someone, but then if you go out of your way to harass them for, like, their opposing view, then it becomes like an issue because um, everybody has the right to believe what they want. Yes, and we all have reasons for why we feel the way we mm -hmm. feel. And I mean, I, I personally would rather not go on record and say who I'm voting for, but I will say that there is a lady that I talked to. I met her at McDonald's. She's a really, really neat older lady that would come in in the night. And what's cool is she and I are complete ends or opposites on the political spectrum. We mm -hmm. could not disagree more, but we're really good friends, and we have some of the most interesting conversations. We never argue, we never try to change each other's minds, and we both go home at the end of the night feeling like we had an interesting conversation, but both still feeling the way we did before. Yeah. And I wish more people would do that. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on that. So, would you ever um, consider running for president in the future? Well, it, it's funny you, you say that because, um, I, I mean, I am politically active, I do have to say that, and uh, I've always, you know, you mentioned earlier that you thought that you made a, a comment about the way I speak, mm -hmm. and actually it's because, you know, around the same time that I was, uh, that I started singing, I also was really impressed by how certain politicians were so well-spoken and articulate. And so I kind of trained myself to do that a little bit too. So I, running for president, I, I personally would probably say no, because <laughs> I, I mean it would it might be fun to do it just to see what people would say, but um, I I don't I don't know about that. That, <laughs> I, that that's fun. It's a funny question to think about, but I don't know about that one. I might write you in for president this year, after after our conversation, just because I love your ideas. Well, it would just, I mean, I don't think like in our area, I don't think it really matters who we vote for. So just, just do me a favor. If you do that, don't tell anyone else you're doing it. Cause next thing you know, I'll have 30 people doing it. And then there'll be something on the news where, who is this? And then I, um, and, then, and then everyone will listen to your music. It's oh, the well, perfect plan. Yeah. I'll just get up on the television. I'll say, I'm not interested in running for president, but I'll sing a song and then I'll walk away. And just sing the star spangled banner. You know, I, actually, it's funny. I've posted videos of myself doing that a few times. I mm -hmm. did it on September 11th, actually, and it really meant, a, again, that's another example of how the music is so personal. I was in sixth grade yeah. on 9-11, and I'll never forget that day. Like, I can remember that day like it just happened. And uh, when I remember the, the tragic events of that day and I sing, you know, our country's anthem, I mean, I, I, I tear up. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, you know, I would be willing to sing the Star Spangled Banner at like a basketball game or something if yeah. the opportunity presented itself. Uh, yeah, I'm, I might be playing basketball this year, so I'll see if I can talk to someone because I think that'll be pretty cool if you came in and did the Star Spangled Banner. Um, now, going back to like being well spoken, I think you're pretty well spoken. I've been trying to work on like my public speaking. Like, I have the confidence to go out there and talk to like most people, but as you can just keep hearing, I keep saying like and um, those little filler words so do you have like any uh advice for public speaking i would say the best advice i could do for public speaking is find someone that is a great communicator and study them you mm -hmm. know just you know what makes them a, and it it's the same with like if you were going to be an actor like what works and what doesn't work um i think two of the greatest communicators i've ever seen and it, it's interesting because they're both opposites the two greatest communicators I think I've ever seen were Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton. And they're both very different, both in ideology and style, but, you know, Reagan, you know, had a, a, a natural charm about him, and uh, Bill Clinton was a very charismatic speaker. And so, you know, I, I've kind of watched both of those. But I also grew up in a house with a mother that read 
and she was very, you know, opposed to constantly using the word like and um, and you, you just kind of learn over the years not to do it. So it, yeah. it's, it's a learned thing, but it, it can be done. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the next step is for you? Um, because you're working as a Cadillac dealer or at the Cadillac dealership and then you're doing your music stuff. Um, is there something else that you want to do in life or is there like a next step? You know, I really am happy to be able to say this. I, I'm really just truly happy to be doing what I'm doing and, and where I am. I'm happy to, to have the job that I have. You know, I'm happy to have met the people that I have met and I'm happy that, you know, they enjoy my music. I live in an area that I like, so right now, you know, I think contentment is a big word, and for the moment, I think I found it, and I just want to enjoy it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I agree with that. I See, I'm also, like, a bad interviewer, I think, because, like, I just keep saying, yeah, I agree with that, but, like, I've been listening, like, the stuff you're saying, I think that our views, like, line up pretty well. Um, so before, before I end it, because I think we're going kind of long, I don't know how long, or unless you have anything else you want to mention. No, I'll just I'll just say that um, one more time that you know anyone that's ever you know made the choice to follow me on Instagram, you know the people that support my music, that like my videos, mm -hmm. you know all my good friends, you know from you know these past three years, you know like Carson and Jeff, Noah, Jack, Sean, like all of everybody. I, I'm just Alex. Yes, absolutely. You, you know Alex's brother Jake. Mm -hmm. Um, just all of you guys, you know, it, it, you're so much more than supporters. You know, you've supported me to the point where my voice has become more powerful, and at the end of the day, you're friends. Yeah. That's the highest level that you can get. I respect that a lot, because, like, I think so many people in, like, the music industry, they're just so concerned about their follower count, or they're concerned about getting money, and I think um, you have one of the unique personalities that's, like, I want to focus on building relationships and having my music have an impact on people and having it mean something to you as well. So I think that's really powerful and important. Um, is there, what's one piece of advice that you'd leave with everyone watching? Um, I would just say that, you know, if you are, if you have a dream and you don't believe maybe that it'll happen or maybe you think that it, it, it's ridiculous in your own mind mm -hmm. I just would say I look back at who I was 10 years ago singing music of the night in my bedroom dreaming that I would you know have people that enjoyed it dreaming actually that I had a good voice because I didn't know really yeah. and uh, so I would just say follow your heart don't be afraid to be who you are and embrace each other's differences that's I think that's a really good message to end on I just want to thank you for coming on my first ever podcast I thought you'd be a great guest and I think it went pretty good well, it was I think a, people got some good background about you it was a pleasure and uh, you know don't sell yourself short either I will never do that here let's just take a quick picture like, just a little pose hold up where should right. I I'm looking the wrong way oh right there. <laughs> and then once again thank you to Applebee's for letting us uh, use their booth for um, the podcast I'm going to go back home and edit this. I'll probably release it later tonight. Uh, so, guys, thank you for watching. Comment down below who should I have on my podcast next. Thank you, Chris, for coming. My pleasure.